Well, it's December, that wonderfully magical time of year in which all the world's children become excited about the arrival of a jolly plump man in red who loves to jump. No, not that one. This one. I'm talking Santa Claus. And in this game we're going to have a look at today, Santa Claus in Trouble, we find our protagonist, Santa Claus, in trouble. The game is a 10 level long 3D platformer in which the only real objective is to rack up a high score. You can collect presents and there is a time limit, but the only thing you get for actually collecting presents and making it within a certain time is receiving points for achieving those respective objectives. Throughout the entire game you only have 3 lives and you don't get any extra lives for finishing levels, but you can actually find extra lives throughout the levels hidden around and usually off on separate paths. Checkpoints for the most part are given rather liberally and if you do run out of lives while it does reset your score to zero it doesn't actually prevent you from restarting the level on which you died from with zero points. So that's the basic setup of the game but simply explaining what the game is isn't exactly a review so let's get critical. When I started playing the game I was overjoyed to hear Christmas music playing because I love Christmas music because I love Christmas. Which I suppose you've probably already figured out yourself considering you're watching me review a Christmas game around Christmas time. However, rather quickly it wore thin. You see, in Santa Claus in Trouble there are only four songs. And each one of them is rather short, in fact combined all four songs aka the entire game's soundtrack come to be roughly five minutes in length. Which loop continuously. Much like many other aspects in this game I'm completely unsure whether this was intentionally annoying or if it was by complete accident. And adding to the frustration you can't actually turn down the volume of the music in the game from the pause menu which means if you want to do it you have to go back to the main menu and to do that you have to exit the game which has no save states which means basically if you're doing a good run and you find the music is starting to be really annoying you have to either put up with it or leave the game. I personally chose to leave the game, mute the music and then put some Gary Hoey on in the background to enjoy instead and instantly the game got considerably better. So if you choose to check out this game yourself I suggest you do that before actually starting to play it so you don't lose your progress. Aside from the soundtrack the sound effects in the game are passable. They're not fantastic but they're not anything to complain about. Moving on from the sound department to the graphics department I personally didn't mind the graphics too much. They're not the best graphics ever but considering the game is only 20 meg they're pretty darn good. Everything is fairly Christmassy with snow everywhere and cottage style houses and for some reason goblins and birds I'm, I'm not really sure what they're doing here. The goblins kind of look like Klungo from Banjo Kazooie and I don't know is this what a turtle dove is? I thought it was a crow but it's wearing a scarf so I guess that's kind of Christmassy. There are snowmen though so that's that's pretty Christmassy. Except I live in Australia so snowmen would die horribly. Whatever, everything looks Christmassy enough and considering the size of the game, the fact that it's relatively old, the fact that it's free and if you don't think too much about the enemies it's all pretty darn good and I'm going to give it a pass. If I did have any real criticisms about the art direction I would say that it is a bit too repetitive and by the time you get to level 10 you sort of begin to suffer from sensory deprivation because everything looks the same and also Santa's turn cycle is completely non-existent. And speaking of Santa's lack of rotation animation this is probably the best time to segue over into talking about the gameplay and controls. When complaining about the music I pondered as to whether or not it was intentionally annoying and mentioned that there were other things in the game that also had me wondering this. And said other thing that had me wondering this is none other than the controls. This game is definitely not your Mario and this game is definitely not your Banjo Kazooie. The controls in this game just feel weird. They're all strangely floaty and I'm not really sure I can explain what's wrong with them but they just don't feel right. Many sections of the game especially in later levels require you to perform pinpoint accuracy on your jumps but considering that your controls in the game don't exactly feel pinpoint accurate themselves and also considering that the game has some serious collision detection issues this is a pretty tall request and it can get pretty darn frustrating. However to quote a certain president get good. and indeed once you do get good the game becomes a lot more enjoyable as I suppose most things do when you become good at them. The difficulty of the game ramps up each level and this difficulty curve is for the most part acceptable. However the game does go to trash around level 9. Level 9 has some seriously broken elements that made me actually think the game was unpassable and these elements specifically come in the form of the moving platforms which sometimes simply don't work. 
The point in the level I'm talking about is on the screen here, where you have to jump from a moving platform onto a platform that then starts moving, that then takes you to a raised platform, and wonder where you're supposed to go from there. The platform that you use to get to this platform goes away, and you're left standing there looking like a complete moron. The arrows continue to point to where you're obviously supposed to go to next with no hint of what you've done wrong, and you try to jump and double jump knowing full well that you can't make the distance, but you figure what else are you supposed to do. I wasted so much time trying to figure out what was wrong here and what I had missed, but then it turns out that I had just got off the platform too soon and it goes underneath the platform you jump to and keeps going. But if you jump off the platform onto the platform that it looks like you're supposed to be on, the platform turns back and gives you absolutely no indication that you've done anything wrong. Once you know what you're supposed to do, this section of the map is not a challenge at all. It's just a problem if you foolishly jump onto the block, and by foolishly I mean if you continue to play the game exactly the way the game's made you play it in the last 9 levels. So why is that non-moving platform there? If the moving platform takes you all the way across despite that platform being there, and if the non-moving platform presents literally no challenge if you know you're supposed to stay on the moving platform for a second longer, then what is the point of it being there? Literally, the only reason I can imagine that they bothered to put this non-moving platform in the way of the moving one is to make the game more difficult for people that didn't realise just how bad the game design in this game was. It's inconsistent and really stops the gameplay dead in its tracks and really annoyed the hell out of me. Taking advantage of your own bad game design to artificially inflate the difficulty is not charming, it's just lazy. And the terrible functionality, or should I say lack of functionality of these platforms that only start moving once you jump on it, occurs once more later in level 9 with this big moving platform. While on this big moving platform, the game has you manoeuvring through all sorts of obstacles, which is difficult and quite enjoyable. This part's fine, this part is good game design. However, towards the end of it, it has a section where you have to jump off of it onto a platform and then back onto it once it's passed through an obstacle. However, once more, the issue from earlier crops up, and once you jump off of it onto the platform, half the time the platform thinks you're done with it and goes to head home. This leaves you completely stranded and with nowhere to go. Now with both of these instances, once you figure out how to avoid the issue, you'll never encounter the issue again, and it becomes really easy. But I can't possibly imagine this never came up when they tested the game, which means that they were either too lazy to fix it, or they left it in as a noob trap, and either of those two options really annoys me. But, that said, I'm going to take a deep breath now, and try to look at this game objectively, because after this encounter, I was about to give it a really bad review, but then I went back and played it, full well knowing about these issues, and really did enjoy it on my next playthrough. So let's talk positives. The game's difficulty curve is fantastically done and ramps up exactly as it should do, with each level becoming progressively more difficult. And the game also perfectly manages to nail its risk and reward system, with it giving you a large amount of points if you collect all the presents, but placing those presents on alternative pathways that are more difficult to get to. And also, as stated earlier, there is a time reward, which means if you rush it, which is of course more dangerous, you can achieve a better score that way. Some areas of the game can definitely be frustratingly difficult, but as an arcade style game where the main objective is to score a lot of points, the difficulty is well within the range of acceptable. I'm not going to pretend the game is perfect, and I think I've definitely addressed some of the main issues with it, but if you really do want to give this game a chance, I would say play through it twice. The first playthrough is definitely a bit of a chore, as you figure out exactly what the game wants you to do. But the second playthrough, once you've actually figured out the patterns and once you've figured out the little noob traps, is actually pretty damn fun, and I enjoyed trying to beat my high score. So I suppose in closing, if you're looking for a 3D platformer that's not entirely terrible and is Christmas themed, and you don't mind games that are NES hard, and you're willing to overlook the issues that I've just pointed out in this video, I would say definitely check out Santa Claus in Trouble. And if you're wanting more Christmas themed videos, subscribe to Channel Grim and Grin, because we've got more on the way. So until next time, thanks for watching, I have been and still am Grim Grindle.